one of the things that we do there, that we noticed was uh, lots of friends do drop off you and you uh, you're kind of on your own a little bit more so you're left to figure out things on your own rather than bounce thing off of friends uh, which is uh, different for us. We had a large uh, base of friends, uh, and, and we and the friends that we do have with still are wonderful. Dan has a, 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 a law friend that calls him every single morning. She called him this morning before we came here, and she just always checks in with him. And there are those people in your lives that are wonderful. They they have no idea what an impact they make. The the, the hard thing for me um, sometimes is adapting to I call it modern culture, where people aren't ever respecting or dealing with a person who's bred brain injury because they want to say that because you have brain injury you can't think and the hard part is even if you've had a brain injury you recover and you can think and people don't want to hear the thought process behind that what they're doing is either illegal or improper or not thought out and that is a hard life to live on when People need to, society, friends, whatever, can sometimes ask me questions rather than telling me what to do all my life. <laughs> At some point, you get a little irritated when people say, like, we well, need to do this. Like, I'll decide what I need to do at this point. <laughs> it's like, pretty much that's what it is. He tends to be left out of. I'm left out of every conversation. If we go out to yeah. dinner with friends, he gets lost in the conversation. He doesn't always initiate conversation, and people, uh, even old friends, tend not to ask uh, questions. I mean, he used to be the authority on plants. He knows every Latin name of every plant, and everyone came to him with, with their gardening dilemmas, <laughs> and he would always know exactly what to do if yeah. they had a sick plant or what is this plant uh, to help identify it. And people just uh, don't really ask him for, for his advice, his knowledge, as much as they used to in the past. So I write poems. That's what I do now. I write poems. I like doing that and writing things. So that's my plan. He, Pretty much. He was a yeah. poetry. Yeah. He wrote poetry starting in actually grade school probably yeah, I have that book yeah and he has a incredible uh, collection over the decades and he was going to read a poem at his mother's funeral which was just last week and uh, it was about love and family and it was a beautiful poem and his sisters didn't want him to read it at the uh, funeral, just mm -hmm. just because I don't even really know what they're thinking. They about. wanted to speak, but I couldn't speak because they, they both spoke. But that's just the typical thing. That's how where, we're treated. Where yeah, you just feel left out. Yeah, and he had something to say, and you only have one opportunity to speak at your mother's funeral, and I think that that was sad that they took away that opportunity for him.